already on a Monday. Thank you, Ali, um, for letting us know we're going to be here recorded. Um, we'll introduce ourselves here in just a second. We'll give a second for our colleagues to continue to come into the waiting room. Yeah. All right. Well, as the dust settles, <laughs> let's go on forward. All right, friends. So I don't know if it's our fir your first time with us. Um, welcome. We're so happy you're here with us. This is session three of a series of nine, and we'll catch you up a little bit. If you'll, don't worry about what happened in session one or two. We're going to catch you up. And even if you've been here with us, um, it'll also be a good spiraling session. But we're, today we're going to talk about barriers and the implications right within the context of inclusive literacy. In front of you see some prompts and some icons to remind you that we are a community of learners. So feel free at any time in the chat um, to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from. Um, ask a question or answer a question. Feel free to share an idea or a connection that you see. And of course, a hyperlink for resources for you and your colleagues. So welcome to use the chat in that way uh, to support each other. We have a home-based document, which you'll be able to do so. Speaking of chat, even though I know we've all seen this and used this uh, method uh, to our madness here for the last year and a half, almost two, but just in case, right? Of course, the chat feature is on, should be on the bottom of your screen. Um, you just click on chat. And the only piece that we're still um, uh, navigating is who do I want to send this chat to? Is it just to the panelists? Is it to a specific colleague or to all in general? Just go ahead and make sure you click that drop down menu accordingly to who you wish to address. So there's five of us in this team of CAST facilitators. I'm in right in the middle, Elisa Torres Barton. It's my pleasure to see you and meet you. And I support the work at Fresno County Superintendent of Schools. And my co-presenter for today is Becky. Becky, you want to take a second? Sure. Thank you, Elisa. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us um, on a Monday afternoon. My name is Becky Canham, and I support um, the Placer County Office of Education. Awesome. I see some of my FCSS team in the house. Woo -woo, go, Julia. All right. Glad you guys are here. Um, wonderful. And then in the background, friends, as you know, if you've done anything Zoom facilitating, you know you can't do this on your own. So we've got Sharon on the back end. Sharon, can you wave? Thank you. I see you. Yeah, there we are. And then, of course, um, Elise will be joining us next time. And then Wyatt, a Katie, aka Wyatt, thank you for manning the breakout room options and, of course, the chat. So, as you can imagine, we cannot do this by ourselves. Um, and yeah. we also have um, Debbie, our captioner, with us this yes. afternoon. So, if you need live captioning, you can go ahead and choose that from your menu bar. Yeah. Thank you so much, Becky. Uh, my sticky note did not help you, yeah, friend. Okay. All right. So let's uh, connect a little bit, friends. Um, and feel free to mute yourselves. I know you're just logging on, and I totally understand, but feel free to mute yourselves as soon as you log in, just in case we have some background. You might hear my toddler come through, so remind me to mute. <laughs> anyway, uh, preschooler going on 35. So I want you to bring you in the room here just a second and think about your most memorable learning experience your most memorable learning experience. And so we've got options. If you're an external processor like me, you're ready to go. You're gonna mute here in just a second. Uh, if you wanna take a little more time to consider and think about it, just drop it in the chat and we will pause to give you an opportunity to do so. So again, it doesn't have to be the as a, in your current role, just as a learner in general, what is the most memorable learning experience you had? Drop it in the chat. And in about a minute or so, um, Let's have you unmute if some of you want to share verbally. I will pause. It won't probably be a minute, it'll be probably like 35 seconds, but yeah. Ooh, learning a new instrument at 39, Susie, for sure. What instrument was it? Now I'm all nosy. Susie, what instrument was it? The out. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to Google it. Ooh, okay, thank you. For those of you just joining us, we're just reflecting on what's describing your most memorable learning experience. Yeah, and if you can think about what made it memorable, why yeah. was it such a positive learning experience? 
Thank you, Aurora. I can share why it was a positive learning experience for me or memorable. Yeah, go for it, Susie. Because it had to do with my own family history and mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather used to play this instrument and it mm -hmm. saved his life. So it was very significant for me to be able to do that. Oh, so that big connection to the family, huh? It was deeper than the instrument itself, for sure. Learning to water ski, my dad and uncle, I clashed. He passed me to my uncle who taught me right away. For sure. I also see in the chat, um, Aurora said learning about slavery, but through multiple ways, through videos, movies, mm -hmm. and other representations. Mm -hmm. And then Mikey also wrote about um, teacher allowing um, this in fifth grade, teacher allowing them to learn about a subject they wanted to with history and then teach the class. So that idea of choice. Hmm. Awesome. Acting it out too, acting out colonial times in fifth grade, change of outfits and all. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, Wyatt talking about learning the ropes on a ship, it was powerful because it was hands-on and relevant to the task at hand, mm -hmm, that relevance piece. Planning a dream vacation in sixth grade, yes. Budgeting, sightseeing. That reminds me, Char, of, um, I don't know if I'm dating myself, but they made us carry a five pound, a pound of harina, how do you say, flour, and that was your practice, baby. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys ever had to do that in high school. We had to practice parenting. Yeah, it was awesome going to the cafeteria with a five pound thing <laughs> of flour. But it was the idea of like this, you know, take care of your baby. Yeah. Mine was a, an egg. We had to do a baby. <laughs> egg. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a choice. I had to carry five pounds. And they're like, yeah. and that's light because most babies are not just five pounds. But anyway, neither you nor there. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, everybody. Of course, we're going to connect here in here in just a second. All right, so our goals today together are that we will deepen our understanding of inclusive, lit inclusive literacy practices by, we know the whole webinar series is around this topic of inclusive literacy practices by, but today's section will be on exploring how to anticipate barriers and examining strategies to minimize barriers. And so the agenda to that end, right, and how might we do that, um, and know that these are, if, if in service of our learning, we need to shift these times, please know that De Becky and I are teachers at heart, and we will adjust accordingly, but just know this is the overarching way we're going to go about this. Of course, welcome and introductions, about five minutes, context and framing, right, for the little bit of the spiral that I shared earlier will happen for those of you that maybe have not been here um, and then organizing our learning environment one minute is a common practice from, from CAS that gives us permission to set up our learning environment. And then um, the content for today around anticipating barriers and minimizing barriers, about 15 minutes or so, where you will have an opportunity to engage either in a breakout room if you'd like, or have some time to yourself to consider some options. And then reflection time will be five minutes and then feedback three minutes. So again, you will have an option if you want to talk to colleagues, you'll have breakout room options by goal, by subject area, content area, but also if you need a moment, you know, I just need to process this myself, we will offer an opportunity to stay in the main room. So just know that's coming up. So some documents to support your decision making and your, your learning today, um, what do we call the home based document again common cast tool that we use that captures all nine webinars information will be in that one doc. And then a note taking guide if you'd like to feel free again you don't have to it's just an op another option. And then the discussion board will be a space where we will capture each other's learning right and we're kind of used to these documents now that we've been doing zoom for quite a bit. So I will give you a minute. So the next slide is gonna trigger a clock of one minute to take the time, feel free to turn your camera on and off while you think about, consider these three chunks. How can your space support um, your engagement right now? What might you need to pull up? Do you need your iPad? Do you need a notebook? Do you need what index cards just from what the agenda and the goals were? What is the best way for you to perceive the content and what are the preferences today for sharing your thinking? Where might you be at? Have you been by yourself all day? Are you ready to talk to somebody? Or are you feeling like, you know what? I've been with people all day. I'm gonna choose the main room. Where are you? And so we will pause right now and honor that and give you about a one minute to set all that up.
All right, thank you so much. I hope that was helpful. All right, my friends. So the monthly learning series has been on the role of these components you see in front of you um, in designing for inclusive literacy. So the first time we were together, we talked about mindset, then goal setting, and today is barriers. And then continue on and on for the next couple of months. Every month we'll choose a topic. So next month will be options. And so before we go too deeply, we thought we'd identify a, again, what we call operational definition of what is inclusive literacy. We know there's multiple meanings and lots of different ways to go about considering inclusive literacy. Um, but this is the one we're working from today. So inclusive literacy, if we think about inclusion, is a process of involving and including all people in an environment, regardless of their differences. We know that the literacy component component is the ability to produce and interpret and understand the language. And then underneath, we're adding that layer where it's beyond just what does it mean to include all people? That should result in belonging and valuing and respecting, right? And then on the literacy component, we add the layer of the questioning component, critiquing, and then the social context, right? And so again, we could spend a whole session on just how may we define inclusive literacy? What does it mean for our context? But we just wanted to give you, A, it's on the slide deck, but just a place for where we're working from. To that end, in September, when we talked about aspects uh, about mindset, right, because there's a certain mindset that I'm going to design to include all learners, right, all sizes and flavors, there's a certain mindset. And so in September, we focused on the language component. What is the language? There's four aspects of mindset. What does the language tied to literacy, right? What is the language component around that? And so, again, in your home-based document and the slide decks, we'll have all those pieces. This is a kind of little commercial reminding you of what we've done. But if you're curious, for those of you that were not able to join us. The recordings are all linked in the home-based document of those previous sessions, but we focus on the language component. In October, we tackled the goal piece, right? Because all this that we're planning around has to be tied to a something. So the so, something is where is it that we're trying to go? What is the goal? And so Wyatt um, supported us through that learning last month. And we talked about how universally designed goals are flexible. The means are separated from the goal. They are relevant and meaningful. They are rigorous in service of expert learning and clearly communicated. And an example, exemplar example, too many X's in that, <laughs> is one in front of you that says, I can analyze cause and effect relationships within the rock cycle that connect to climate change disasters in my area. Again, this is a slide straight out of that webinar, just showing you how we went over mindset. We connected it to goals. Okay, now that I have a robust and rigorous and accessible goal, what do I do next? towards that inclusive literacy. And so that's where in that middle um, column of your uh, slide right now, where it says, we're gonna anticipate the barriers, right? In order for me to include the learners, I have to consider what about my design, what within my design may come across or be a barrier to learners. And so that's our focus for today. And then next month, we're gonna dive a little bit into options, friends, just know that. But next month, we'll spend the whole entire hour around the idea of designing options to minimize barriers. So let's talk about barrier very quickly within the context of UDL um, and CAST. And I know this is not heavy UDL, but I'm sure you can see the tenets of it if you're familiar. We come from the space of the barriers in the design, not the learner, right? If I'm going to include somebody, it means that I believe they're worthy, they're enough, they come as they are. And then us as facilitators of learning, we will design, right? We'll make a hypothesis is what we think would remove barriers. We test it and we continue that iterative process. So just know that we're coming from that space. So to make it more practical, okay, that's beautiful. We agree, ladies, this is fantastic, but let's make it more practical. So here are some areas to consider, and then Be Becky is going to make it more concrete. Some areas we invite you to consider with anticipating barriers. For those of you that think of buckets, this is your love language. So when we're thinking about anticipating barriers, we want to consider how is the content being represented? So think about the materials. How is the content being delivered? That's the methods bucket. How is the content, excuse me, how is the learning being demonstrated? So from the student perspective, how am I showing you that I know what I, what I think I know? And then the last component is that in California, we know it's a hot topic of climate culture. How is the climate culture in my environment supportive of the learning? So four buckets to consider. Again, thinking about how do I anticipate barriers? This is helping us zoom in. If you think about a filter, it's helping us zoom in. What buckets might I consider? Is this a finite list? No, my friends, we can have probably more, but just know that this is where we're coming from for today.
All right, Becky, let's make it more concrete. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Elisa. Um, just like Elisa said, we're going to uh, try to get a little more practical and concrete with um, this practice of using those four areas to anticipate barriers. So we're going to go back to that, um, that exemplar example goal. Uh, I had to say that very slowly. Um, of students will analyze cause and effect relationships within the rock cycle that connect the climate change disasters in our area. So this is a learning goal that we're going to use as we go through, again, those four areas of consideration um, when we're trying to anticipate um, proactively those barriers that might um, come up for our learners um, during a learning experience focused on this goal. So we think about the first area. So the first area being um, materials. So how is the content being represented? So what materials are um, being used to support students in perceiving the information? So we wanna think about um, what might be some barriers. So perhaps in this learning experience, um, maybe the information is only being represented um, in written text and that might be a barrier for some students. Um, because it's a very specific topic, maybe there's some content specific vocabulary that might also be a barrier. So again, thinking about how the information is represented. Then when we start to think about the methods, how is the content being delivered? So how is the information being presented? Um, again, what might be some possible barriers? Um, so one might be background knowledge. Again, it's a very specific topic. Um, the relevance of the topic. Is it connected to students' lives? Um, that could also present a barrier. Um, and then thinking specifically how the information is being delivered. Um, what's the method of delivery? That in, a, in and of itself might also be a barrier. Um, is all of the information just being presented in a lecture format? That could be a barrier for some students. And then um, thinking about the next area, the area of assessment. How is the learning being de demonstrated? Um, when we think about how are the learners going to be able to show us um, what they've learned or to show their understanding? Um, are there other skills required in that demonstration? So do the students have to provide a written response because the writing part might be the barrier or is reading um, required to demonstrate understanding? Um, and also thinking about, is there, um, is there not a lot of formative assessment? Is the assessment only happening at the very end? Do students really understand what's being asked of them throughout the process? So those all might be some possible barriers for assessment. And then um, our fourth kind of bucket, that of environment. So thinking about uh, how is the culture and climate of the classroom supporting, supporting the learning? Um, thinking about, do students feel safe and comfortable working together in groups or presenting or discussing information? Um, how does the physical uh, environment support access to uh, resources or materials that might be needed um, to support the learning in that area? And again, this is not an exhaustive list of the barriers that might be um, found in a learning experience around this goal of the rock cycle. But these are just some of the barriers that might come up in these four areas. And um, what you see on the screen is just kind of a representation of the, uh, the barriers or the anticipated barriers that I talked through. So we're going to give you an opportunity to engage in um, a similar process of anticipating barriers. So we have six different sample goals, um, each connected with a content area, ELA, math, science, history, social science, um, visual and performing arts, and world languages. And you're going to have a choice of choosing um, a content goal to engage in this same kind of um, process of thinking about those four areas and anticipating um, barriers. So we have breakout rooms set up one through six are connected with the content goals. And then we also have an independent option. If you would prefer to stay in the main room, there is an independent document where you could choose to go through this process of anticipating barriers using a goal of your own. So we're going to give you 10 minutes in the breakout rooms 
Again, when you join, please take a moment or two to introduce yourselves and say hello. We know um, you might be new to one another. So feel free to use some time, again, to introduce yourself, say hello before you jump into the content. There will be a second time that you will be going back into this same breakout room um, in a few minutes. And our guiding question is what might be some possible barriers in the design when planning for this goal? So as we are opening the breakout rooms, if you have a question, please feel free to unmute or drop it in the chat. If there are no questions, um, please feel free to join a breakout room of choice. You will see a list of all the participants' names on the breakout room options. And if you scroll down, then you'll see the rooms and a blue uh, button to, that says join. And that's how you can join your own room. If you have difficulty joining one of the rooms, please in the chat, just put which room you would like to join and we can manually add you. All right, welcome back everyone. Um, thank you for engaging in the um, Anticipating Barriers activity. We see a lot of um, really great thinking around the ELA goal and the math goal. Um, please know you will be going back or have the option to go back into a breakout room with that same team in just a moment. So if you're not, not done with anticipating the barriers, um, I also see some options already started. Um, don't worry, we're just pulling you back for um, a few minutes and then you will be off again to um, collaborate or to work independently a little bit more. So we um, began by thinking about um, our learning goal and anticipating those barriers that might present themselves in a learning experience um, designed to meet the specific learning goal. We um, took a look at four different areas and considered what might be some possible barriers in each of those areas. Um, and like Elisa said, these are not, this is not an exhaustive list, this four area, these four areas, um, and also the possible barriers that we identified are not uh, an exhaustive list. We just kind of wanted to model a little bit of the thinking that goes in um, when anticipating barriers. So now that we've identified some possible barriers, we wanna think about how might we address these barriers? How might we minimize these barriers? So um, in our particular example, under the area of um, materials, we identified two possible barriers. Um, we identified that perhaps the content was only being represented in a written format. That might be a barrier for students. We also identified um, content specific vocabulary as being a barrier for students. So we wanna think about what might be some options that I as an educator can design to minimize these barriers. We want our options to kind of connect or align with the barriers um, to minimize them. So how might we reduce the barriers? So thinking about the barrier of written text. Um, as a designer, I might consider providing um, audiobooks with the content. Um, I might consider sharing some of the content through video. Maybe a teacher read aloud supporting students' um, reading ability as well. And then thinking about um, the barrier of content specific vocabulary, I might think about um, some front loading of vocabulary. I might think about designing some options for graphic organizers to support students um, understanding of the vocabulary, like a Freyer model. Um, I also might consider the option of visual representation for some of the content specific vocabulary. So again, not, uh, not an exhaustive list, but just kind of thinking about what are some of those options that might minimize the barriers that we previously anticipated. So we just walked through um, that practice 
in the area of materials, but um, on the document and then also on the screen, you'll see uh, some possible options for all of the barriers that we had identified um, initially when looking at this specific learning goal. So again, we're going to give you some time, um, either in a breakout room or independently, to kind of con continue with our inclusive um, literacy design process and thinking about how might I design some um, options to minimize these barriers. Okay, I know some of the rooms we're still working on um, barriers. That's fine. You're going to have 10 minutes again to consider continue this design process, whether you're still identifying and anticipating barriers, or if you're ready to work on, um, have that conversation around what are some of the specific options that might address these anticipated barriers. Becky, another pivot I might make from the first session is, friends, if you're in a space where like, I don't want to focus on a goal for your content and you want to chat about it, feel free to stay in the main room and ask us some questions. Yeah, those of you that are working independent can mute us, <laughs> I think, on your end. But those of you that are external processors that are not ready to create just yet and you want to talk, we want to make sure, just feel free to unmute and, and chat away with us, okay? Yeah, we are here. Great point. Thank you, Elisa. Any questions before we head off? to our breakout rooms or into our uh, workspace. I will start the timer this time. In, um, in some um, collaboration and then some independent work as well. Uh, I see some really good thinking on that document around um, the math goal and and the ELA goal. Um, and for those of you, just like Elisa said, that were in the independent option, um, you might want to take a look at it. There's, again, some really good um, discussion and thinking went into um, the collaboration around anticipating barriers and designing some options. So another I point I would raise, Becky, too, is like friends, uh, we have over 150 people that signed up for the webinar. And so they'll do this on their own and they'll be contributing to that same document. So feel free to come back and revisit and see what other colleagues across the state, actually across the nation, might consider um, how they're planning and they're considering how do they design around options and barriers. So feel free. This is living document. Keep it minimized on your on your <laughs> on your deck um, and just know it's here for you. Go ahead. Becky. Point. Yeah, I, this great, is great, Shamron. Great. I also mm -hmm. had an opportunity to pop in to um, a lot of the breakout rooms and there was some really rich discussion that may not have necessarily been captured on those documents. So just wanted to kind of give some thanks and a shout out to the folks that are, you know, are the external processors out there like me. Um, it really helped to solidify the thinking. Um, and I also really appreciated in one of the rooms I was in, there was a parent in there that was bringing some really great um, questions to the discussion uh, specific to some of the needs or um, that are surfacing as she's supporting her child in, in their learning as well. So I just wanted to call that out as well. Really great ideas. Um, I, I got to check in on math and um, the ELA group. So thanks everybody um, out there for putting your, um, putting your thinking together and, and um, offering some ideas to support one another. It was great. Thank you, Shamran. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to do a little bit of reflection. Um, on this process. So really thinking about uh, the process of anticipating barriers and designing options to minimize barriers. Um, and think about whether you're working independently or collaboratively, kind of how did that process go? So what is resonating with you so far or what might you be wrestling with? And there is a place um, on our document. Um, the unique link has been dropped into the chat for you to um, respond. On. Again, take a couple of minutes to reflect on the process that we just went through. And if the Google Doc, doc is a barrier, feel free to use the chat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know yes. Sometimes, depending time of day, the bubbles get overwhelming for me. So feel free to drop it in the chat if the Google document is, is a barrier. Yeah, yeah, great point. Or unmute. We're, yeah, for sure. 
they like external external processors as well. And if you're, as you're looking through um, others' reflections, if something really stands out to you, feel free to add what we call a plus one that shows that you're in agreement or it's something that's also resonating with you. I see one down here, but that's kind of one of our, our ways of kind of annotating and, and kind of highlighting something that, um, that resonates with us as well. Or a question mark if maybe there's something that you're not quite sure about. I'm an external processor here. Is it okay? Awesome. To make a comment? <laughs> yes. Um, I'm 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 a parent, and I was in one of the rooms, and I just wanted to thank one of the participants. Talked about um, just she'll know who she is. Color for meaning, and I I thank you. I appreciate the specificity on that. Um, and just um, we started getting into a meaty discussion at with at the heart of comprehension and how to piece it together when working memory becomes a barrier and drawing is a barrier and writing is a barrier. And just to mention that it was was really helpful to me. Thank you. And um, it would be great um, to to bring um, like really tangible like um, real world examples in and, and have um, on on these kinds of things and have people just sit and brainstorm something specific like that. I, I know we did have examples today, but like bringing in something that's just very like right there kind of thing. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and great idea. Um, we will be going deeper with options um, next month. So maybe more tangible examples might be something that, that we add in. So thank you for that feedback and for your participation. So. Thank you. I think Allison's volunteering for the next one in December. Maybe we have uh -huh. a breakout room. Ask Allison questions. <laughs> yes. Be careful yes. what you ask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, not it. <laughs> no, I dig it for the external processors. Yeah, like a little case study. I love that. Uh, mm -hmm. Great idea. Great idea. Living case study, not little. Yeah. No diminishment. Because I have a child I could bring into the room in December too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, some really, really great, uh, great comments and reflections. Um, people liking the the four different areas, the buckets. We're really trying to find a way to kind of make sense, make it a little more practical or concrete, and provide kind of a process for it. So we're um, glad to see that that was helpful. We see great discussions. People like the pro um, going through the process collectively. Um, I love this. This is kind of our our mantra: planning ahead before we encounter um, barriers. And then also this anticipating rather than accommodating on the fly, really that idea of um, being proactive in the design rather than reactive. Um, so some wrestlings, yeah, common themes or barriers that I can anticipate. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we take a look at the UDL guidelines, there are some suggestions there um, that really help to um, address barriers. Um, tools, thinking about barriers in the delivery of lessons. Um, Becky, I wanna jump on the second bullet, is it? Cause that's the one that- Yes, that's, yep. how I knew do I, one I, mm -hmm. Yeah, how do I mindfully do this without being overwhelmed? Absolutely. Um, and I say this, it sounds foo-foo, but I'm saying offer ourselves grace yes. and everything about instruction is a hypothesis. I hypothesize that this will work and then I test my hypothesis, right? And just like scientists don't quit because that the experiment didn't go well, they just continue to iterate. Um, that's the grace that we uh, we try to balance as educators because you have this urgency because Elisa is my student and I want to help Elisa, right? Um, but no, overall, it's a hypothesis that we're testing. And every time we design, we anticipate and then we continue to iterate. But yes, very living tension, right? We live with that every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Thank you again for your, um, your reflection and your processing. Um, we want to kind of end on, on this quote, there are no immovable barriers to education by um, Irina Volkova. Um, so when we, when we kind of looked at this, we were talking about it and we were thinking, wow, um, the last year and a half has really been a testament to, to this quote. Who would have thought we could have um, delivered um, instruction and been um, been able to continue education through a pandemic when when we had no students on campus. So 
Um, again, and we just want to kind of end our time with that reminder that barriers are in the design and we as designers can um, design options to minimize those barriers. Yeah, and to that end, friends, in December, when we see each other, is it December? Holy cow. Wow. Okay, so this, yeah, the second Monday in December, we'll see each other again, either live or two times the speed, if you're one of me that does that on the webinars. <laughs> but the next one will be options, like we alluded to earlier. Um, we're so excited about that, because that's where the creativity comes to play. And every time we talk to educators, we get even more and more ideas to test, right? More ideas to support our students. Um, we also would love your feedback. This is really crucial, even though, yes, is via Zoom. Yes, is all of us as collective strangers in some way, what ties us together is making impact for kids. So we're hoping that feedback um, can continue to refine what we do to support um, this work every month. Um, and then the next slide, we want to brag on ourselves a little bit. <laughs> we have a website that has statewide resources, friends, that is free for all our districts, even though there's five of us supporting five specific county offices. We have statewide resources that are available to any school, any educator, any parent, completely free, and we're building them as we go. And every month they're based by theme. There's four ways to access. So, so feel free to dive in, to share, to send us a question or a suggestion. We are avid learners um, and passionate about this equity work. Um, and so we would welcome any kind of feedback. All right, so we'll see you next time. I think the next slide has the, the previous slide had the date, huh? They can register December 13th, mm -hmm. December 13th. Oh yeah, I popped gosh. it in the yeah. chat too. I put a link to register also in the uh, chat for folks as well. So. Yes, thank All you right. again for joining us. Thank you for your participation and engagement on a. Yeah. Monday afternoon when it's already getting dark out because of yeah. the time change. It's, it looks so late outside right now. It's yeah weird. All right. Thank you. Feel free to, um, the bell has rung, like I say to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <It's interesting laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you, yes, FCSS thank team. You. I see you. <laughs> yeah. And we'll hang out here too if folks yeah. want to hang back and have some questions. We'll, we'll be here for a few more minutes. Yeah. Thanks everybody for being here. Take care.